Mm, yeah. So I formally welcome you all to day one of Indian Debating League training. This is phase three, day one. So this is for the senior category. For the next hour, I'm going to be covering a couple of things from format explanation to the entire theme explanation and what ideal 3.2 is about, what you can expect, etc. As far as ideal is concerned, though, ideal uh, is this platform in India that organizes tournaments like ide like ideal 3.2 itself, and we do it twice a month. So there's multiple tournaments to participate in, but we also send people uh, like to international tournaments, right? So this is to say that Harvard, Stanford Invitational, that you make yourself credible enough to go there when you're participating through like ideal or elsewhere, debating tournaments, building your profile, and then eventually becoming good enough to team up with people who go to Stanford, Harvard. Sky is the limit with debating as like a, a pursuit. So these are the universities that ideal has been to. So there's a lot of universities doing a lot of tournaments every year. Harvard is coming up recently. So yeah, so this is just to say that debating has a lot of potential and India also has the infrastructure now through companies like Ideal uh, to get you there. So you just need to learn to avail these opportunities. About Ideal 3.0 in particular though, uh, you know that this is for grades third to 12th. You are divided into categories. The category I am like training is 9 to 12th, right? So you have a separate group for it. You have separate motions. Everything will be different for you because you're senior most category. And the venue will be IIT Delhi for the offline rounds. And offline rounds will only be the last semifinals and finals. Everything else is going to be online. All right. And this will happen on 26th November, the finale. Right. Now you will have three chances to qualify as part of the state team. This is to say that in this particular tournament, in the qualifiers itself, you will be playing in three different rounds in the one versus one format. Okay. This means that the one versus one format, which I will be explaining shortly, is going to be played three times. So let's suppose that there's me and there's uh Pehel. So Pehel and I go against each other in the first round. Then I will go against Aryan in the second round, maybe. And in the third round, I'll probably go against Artha Saini. So it's, it means that I'm not going to go against the same people over and over again. I'll go against different people in different rounds. And every round will have a different motion. And these motions will be shared with you on 23rd October. And the sides will also be shared with you on 23rd October. All right. Somebody is unmuted. You need to self-regulate. Cool. The top 42 candidates who like if you're top 40, if you're one of the top 42 performers, then you will also get a chance to be a part of the national camp quiz round ISDS. For those of you who don't know what that is, ISDS is this organization in India that shortlists, shortlists people for the ultimate championship, which happens in different countries every year. And the selection process is very tough. But if you are top 42, performers in, at ideal 3.0, you will directly get an entry into the quiz round. All right. The third thing is that through, that through ideal, you're going to get pan India recognition and certificates through the certificates. But if you win, you also get trophies and medals and everything. And then there's a wild card to Harvard and Stanford Invitational. This means that if you're doing well in this tournament, you might also be invited to do Harvard and Stanford with us. Uh, below all of this are given your training dates. So 9th to 21st October, this happened in phases. This is the third phase of training, like I was saying. It will all happen online for the next three days. Then the next thing that you have is the qualifiers from 26th October to 7th November. All of this is going to be online on Zoom. And you don't have to be available from 26th October to 7th November throughout. We will tell you which specific dates you're going to have your three rounds on and you have to be available only on those dates. If some of you are not available on a few of the dates in, in this phase or window that's been given to you, please write to hello at the rate ogly .ai that, hey, I can't make it on these dates, so please don't give me these dates to attend these qualifiers on. The rest of the dates I'm fine with. That is keeping in, keeping, I mean, that said, remember that we will not be rescheduling your 
qualify rounds just because you want them to be rescheduled. We will reschedule only on urgent basis, on on uh, a need basis where somebody really wants to be needs to be uh, elsewhere because they have an exam or because they can't miss school or for some such reason. Okay, we won't be uh, like engaging with uh claims that are not proven well. So if you are saying that I have an exam, you need to prove using a date sheet. So attach that date sheet in the mail. Okay. And the finale is going to be 26th November and it will be online, uh, offline at IIT Delhi. But that's for very, very, I mean, that will happen way late. So don't bother yourself with the details just yet. Okay. Uh, Vijay, my voice is not clear. Oh, voice is not clear. I'm sorry. Is this better, guys? Can you give me a thumbs up if this, this is better? Okay, okay. Cool. I think this is what. So the email I'm writing in the chat. Wait. Hello. Update. Only. Dot. Yeah. This is what you need to. Who you need to mail to. Okay. Moving on. Now we are going to discuss the theme of the tournament. First of all, what is the theme? Can some. Okay. Put your answers in the chat. What do you all think is a theme? In debates, not in general. In debates, why do you think we set a theme? Why do we have a theme here? Okay, background for the debate. Specific topic to debate upon. Don't send direct messages. Okay, topic... All right, not many responses. I'm not too happy. Okay, history of India throughout the ages, related topics. Right, good. So understand this. This is the crux of it all. Theme and topic. All right. Both of these things are the same. As in, I mean, they start with T. So that's how you remember the difference from now on. Theme is the overarching concept, all right? So theme, you can't go for or against the theme because theme does not have a for or against, right? Through the concept, we find the topics, all right? So the concept is like, think of this as like a hint, right? Hint to what the topics will be about. So the theme is a hint or like an insight into what this debate tournament is about. It is not really the topic itself. The topic will be given to you on 23rd October, like I said, right? Those will be your topics, three different topics for three different rounds. Right now we're discussing the theme. So theme is something that you need to read about so that when you get the topics, you're not confused about them because the topics will be related to the themes, right? A simple way of understanding themes is this. Uh, for example, you have fruits and then within fruits, you have apple, oranges, uh, bananas and whatnot. This means that think of theme as as this title fruits, right? And within that you have a lot of things. Likewise, there is theme, and then within the theme you have a lot of topics. Is that understood? Give me a thumbs up. Okay. All right. More than half the people say they have understood it. So let's just assume that we are good. So now look at the theme. The theme is India's Odyssey, Ancient India to AI-led India. What is an Odyssey, guys? Quickly, anyone in the chat? The topic will be given on 23rd, Sharmi. First, listen carefully before asking questions. Journey, good. It's a journey. What are some other words? Journey, sure. But what else? What kind of a journey? A dull, boring journey or like adventures. Good. It's an adventurous journey. It's a, it's it's like a journey of intrigue. That's what an Odyssey is. So basically, when we say that the theme is India's Odyssey, what we mean mean to say is that we are going to take you through the history of India through this tournament. How do we do it? 
by giving you various topics that cover ancient India, medieval India, modern India, right? So ancient India to AI led India, that's what it means. We started with like Vedic, Vedic culture, we started with Indus Valley civilization, and today we are a globalized world. We have been through so much, so many gains and losses. All of that we're going to encapsulate in this tournament. And that's why the theme is set as it is, right? Uh, this is the theme, yes, Arunima. Cool. Now, ancient, when you listen to, when you hear the word ancient culture, what are some things that come to your mind? Don't look at the screen. Like, Harappa, Vedic culture, Buddhism, don't write these keywords because they're already there. What comes to your mind when you think of ancient culture? Indus, good. Old, okay. That's not a very... Civilizations, okay. Aryan, okay. Priests, sculptures, diversity, Mohenjo-daro, Hindu religion, before era of BC. Ashoka, good, okay. Temples, monuments, caste system, good. Yeah, so, all right. And when you hear the word medieval India, what is it that comes to your mind? Now we're talking about medieval India. Mughals, okay. Farming, okay. Slave dynasty, kingdoms, Chola empire, this empire, that empire. Revenue system, good. Invasions, fights, yes. There was a lot of rivalry. Right, so that's medieval. And when you think about modern India, again, avoid the terms that are already there in on the slide. What do you think about modern India? You should have more inputs about modern India because we are living in it. Scientific development, technology, rise of power, independence, stru struggle of independence, AI world, digitalization, good, good. So basically you have some, COVID, good. COVID is a good input on urbanization, high standard of living, okay. Geopolitics, yes. Geopolitics is important everywhere. Even in ancient India, there was some geopolitics. Social media, G20, change mindset, world wars, good. All right, we'll stop there. So basically, there's a lot of theme, topics that can be covered under this theme because we're literally discussing the journey of a country. But when you discuss the journey of a country, what we mean is not that you need to know every single thing that happened in this country. What we mean on the contrary is that you need to know the major milestones that India had. For example, colonization at the hands of the British, colonization by the Mughal, right? Uh who came like uh, then the architecture right so the architecture is also very famous in terms of the historical sites in india in terms of uh, the ruins of harappan civilization what was found there what is the most popular artifact that was found uh, from harappa the ruin harappan ruins seals this is called something an important artifact A statue. What's the name? At least one person should know out of 43. No? Okay. So this is basically the dancing girl. I don't know if you heard about it. So, the, no, not Ashoka's edict. So the dancing girl was found, right? Now, there's a lot of such things that happened and they're very, very popular in Indian history. So we will be asking you questions on like the popular stuff. The milestone achievements. Something that is very significant, it's there in your history books, it's very widely available on the internet, right? But what you need to do for yourself is get some conceptual clarity before you get the topics. Conceptual clarity as in, what was ancient India about? How did people think at the time? What was the behavioral configuration of people then? How has it changed over a period of time? What do I need to know about these changes? Then coming on to medieval India. What were the major preoccupations of the people in this particular area? Uh, I mean, era. And uh, why were why was there so much of rivalry? How did the Rajputs coexist with the Mughals? Were they all the same or did they have different approaches? Those, those kinds of questions, all right? And then modern India, of course. Globalization, is it good or bad? What is social media doing to us? What is popular culture? Uh, memes, proliferation of memes, politicization of memes, those kinds of things. So the list is never ending. But the best way to research about this is to probably go on websites like Reuters, websites like Britannia, and search a couple of things, right? Like things popular about India, concepts popular 
about India generated in India. Go to chat GPT, not for finding arguments, for doing background research. Ask chat GPT, what is India known for? What was ancient India known for? And then explore those elements. And then you will get the topic. The idea here about research is that once you've gotten your topic, you can't copy arguments from the internet, but you can use the internet for background research. Okay. So that's the idea of the theme. Now I will take any questions on the theme. You can put them in the chat if you have any. Will the topics of the three rounds cover all three eras? Good question. So the first round will be about unsung discoveries. Unsung discoveries as in there are some things that people think India was the originator of, but the West takes the credit for it. For example, the invention of zero. But this does not mean that this round will only be about discoveries. This round can also be about uh, like just a thing that India should be known for more, right? So unearthing the glory of India in whichever form and way and manner, right? So the first one is going to be that. The second round will be something else. So there's sub themes. The sub theme for the first round is unsung discoveries of India. There are no questions for Vedic culture, Parul. You just need to generally research on it. All right. I think if there are no other questions, we should move on. Okay, I see one more question. Would there be counter questioning? No, I will be coming to the format shortly. Yeah, yeah, format we are discussing, guys. Don't jump the gun. Don't be too ahead of yourselves. Will the motions be known to us? Okay, Saksham, you're not listening when I'm telling you when the motions will be released. So for once and for all, this is for all 43, 42 of you. The motions will be released on 23rd October. Topics will be released on 23rd October. Motion and topic mean the same thing, by the way. All right. Can I get a quick view of this room? How many of you are first time debaters? Give me a show of hands. Okay. 10 people, cool. 13. Thank you so much, you can lower your hands. Now look at this, uh, ignore 16th October to 18th October. This is 19th October 21st. This is the third batch of training uh, and it will end on 21st. Then 26th October to 7th November will be your qualifiers. 3.30 to 8.30 will be the timings, 3.30 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. after school hours, right? And then you won't be available. You don't have to be available on all the dates. It will be spe three specific days you have to be available on. We'll release the schedule shortly. 26th November is when you are supposed to do the finale if you qualify to that round. The next thing is training masterclass schedule. So session one uh, is orientation, which is happening right now. Theme explanation I have already done. Format introduction, I will do today. Then tomorrow we will do the one versus one format in detail, which will include speaker role and responsibilities structure of the argument as to how to make an argument right and what are the components of it and how to revert nicely or how to give a reply speech and then session three will be a little bit of practice with you guys all right let's look at the format right so this is the format in the qualifiers look at the first verbal one versus one is an individual format where you just give two speeches this means that there is no concept of a teammate in this particular round you are not going to be given a teammate you will just be given your topics on 23rd November, uh, October and you're supposed to prepare on those to topics accordingly. This is an individual format. I'm repeating myself. The duration of the speech is three minutes per speaker. What does this mean? So there's going to be two speeches that each speaker will have to deliver in one round. This means that your first speech will be three minutes long and your second speech will also be three minutes long. I'll tell you how those speeches happen and what the speaker order is. Now, all the topics... All the topics that you're going to get are going to be prepared, which means all the topics will be released on 23rd October. There is a change. So in this slide, it says one will be impromptu, 
but we will change it to all three motions being given on uh, on 23rd October itself. You will have three days to prepare yourself. And then for and against the motion also, just give me one second. For and against the motion also is going to be given on 23rd itself along with the topics. All right. Uh, the next important thing is that there's not going to be any POIs in the qualifiers. So what are POIs? POIs are points of interjection or points of information. And these are the like these are just simply questions that you ask the opponent. In some formats, they exist. In this format, they will not exist. So you can't ask a question to your opponent. The next important thing is that the judge will not give you the result right after the debate is over. All right. That will be given to you cumulatively when all three rounds are over and when we're declaring who will uh, progress to the uh, for to the rounds, upcoming rounds and who will not. So don't anticipate any feedback right after the rounds are over. All right. Now, this is the last thing about the format, basic fundamentals of the format. So now there are two sides, right? Like two sides, yes. There are two people in each round against each other. That's what one versus one means, right? So this is one person. This is the second person. Now the first person, maybe they have side proposition. Proposition is also called for the motion, by the way. The side that goes for, goes for the motion is called side prop. And side that goes against the motion is called side op. All right. This means that if you're going for the motion, you will always be the one to start the debate. And if you're going against the motion, you will always end it. Now, the person going for the motion will deliver their first speech for three minutes, all right? And then the person going against the motion will do the same. Deliver their first speech for three minutes. That makes it six minutes. Once the main speeches are over, it's time for the reply speech. The person going for the motion will deliver a reply speech of three minutes. And then the person going against the motion will deliver a reply speech of three minutes. Is the structure clear to you guys? To your Give me a thumbs up. And if it's not clear, just put your questions in the chat. Just don't ask repeat questions, please. Right. Let me see. So uh, the rebuttals have to be impromptu. Yeah, mostly. I will explain this in detail tomorrow when I'm doing the reply speeches with you. So ma'am, the person has to prepare two speeches, right? Yes, that's right. The motions will be known to you, yes, Saksham. Reply thing I will explain tomorrow in detail. So reply happens after the main speeches. Right now I've just told that. Yeah, you will be informed when, if you're for or against beforehand. Will the reply speech be based on the original speech? Uh, it's based on the original speech, but you're also like responding to the other side. So it's more of an attack on the other side. So you listen to them and you prove why they're wrong with new argumentation rebuttals. All right. All right, then. Uh, cool. Moving on. Looking at the types of topics that you can expect. Now, look at one very important thing, especially for the new debaters, right? Every topic will start with this house, this house, this house, this also, this house. So why do you think it starts with this house? What do you think this house means? What do you all think this house means? Put it in the chat. Audience, okay. Don't direct message me, guys. One specific side, no. More guesses, one side, no. For the whole world, okay. The government, let's see. This house means all of this combined. Yes, whoever said that, you're right. So this house basically means the side, the first side, the second side, the judges. They are in a room. That room is a room of decorum. That room is a room where the debate is happening in the parliamentary, I mean, with, a par with parliamentary language and rules established. That is the house. And you're supposed to convince the house to be on your side as a particular side, right? That's why each topic begins with a, this house. Now, this house believes that... In, now, another important thing is 
that you always do what I mean, if you're side proposition, you will always do what the house tells you to do. What does that mean? If this house be believes that India should be portrayed as a center of knowledge, and if I'm proposition, I will also believe that India should be portrayed as a center of knowledge. If this house supports the rise of Bhakti movement as a segment of Hinduism, then I will, as side proposition, also support the rise of Bhakti movement. But if I'm off, I do the exact opposite of what the house tells me to do. So if the house tells me to believe in something, I will not believe in it. I will oppose it. If the house support, tells me to support something, no, I will oppose it. So that's how prop and op work their way out. Uh, okay, quick question, like quiz. Put your answers in the chat. In the third topic, what will the side, like what will side proposition, let's look at the fourth one once, right? And then we'll come back to the third one because third is literally uh, slightly trickier. The third one says this house will ban products in India which are wrongly appropriated by the West. What will side prop do? Will they ban or not ban? Okay, ban, ban, good, ban. Good. You will ban why? Because proposition always does what? The house tells them to do. Now, look at the third topic. What will side proposition do? Will they regret or will they not regret? Okay, regret, regret, regret. Great, excellent. So yes, you will regret because you do exactly what the house tells you to do. Some people think that it's not proposition who will regret, it's opposition who will regret because opposition always does the negative thing and regretting is a negative thing. No. Proposition does what the house tells you to do. So even if the house tells you to do something negative such as regret or ban, you're going to do it. Okay. So remember that. And now go through these topics. These are the kind of topics you're going to get. Not the same topics, of course, but similar to this. Related to India, related to various ages in India, related to various concepts. Okay. That's that. Now, there's a couple of important clarifications and after this, we will end today's session. That's all we have for today. Tomorrow, I will take up what the main speech is supposed to have, what the reply speech is supposed to have and all those details. So, all three rounds are one versus one, okay, in the qualifiers. And you, you will have three different motions for three different rounds, three different opponents for three different rounds and three different judges or judges can be same also. But we'll try to give you three different judges for three different rounds, okay? Attending and preparing for all rounds is mandatory. This means that sometimes you tend to think that, hey, I have already lost two rounds. No point going for the third one. That's a bad technique because sometimes you lose, but you lose with good speaker scores. For example, you got a 28 on 30. Somebody else got a 29 on 30. And just because or just by one point you lost, whereas somebody else might have lost with a bigger margin of victory. Uh, this means that even if you're losing, you have a chance of like making it to the state team because it's not the number of wins. It is the speaker scores that we are calculating. So keep that in mind. <clears throat> also, average of all rounds will be considered. So please be there for all the rounds. As far as reading from a paper is concerned, you can refer to your sheets for bullet points. You can use palm cards. You can use your cue cards. You can use Google Docs. You can use bullet points on from, you can read uh, your bullet point points from that, but you're not allowed to read the entire speech as a senior category. If you do that, you will be downmarked on manner. I'll tell you the judge, what the judges will be looking at when they're judging you tomorrow. That's also for tomorrow. Uh, THW means this house win. All right. No, three rounds will not happen on the same day. Okay, this is it from my side. If we have any questions, we'll stop to answer them. Otherwise, you guys can leave the call and join tomorrow. Same timings every day. That's right. Every day as in the next two days. Two more days left. No, no. Bullet points don't have to be presented on the screen. They don't. Any other questions? You're welcome, Jashin. Could you repeat how I should inform the days I will not be available? Anne, write to hello at the rate ogly.ai, a mail. 
uh, okay so i have recorded this session for you all which means that whichever part you did not understand you can just go back and watch it over again right just watch it it'll be on youtube don't worry you were telling us something about judges can you repeat them yeah yeah so judge i will tell you the criteria that the judge will use, use to judge you tomorrow that's what i was saying what do judges look at they that i will tell you tomorrow it's three things manner matter and method i will explain all of those three things tomorrow you are not judged for stuttering or repetition no that's public speaking debating is not judging you for your manner I mean, manner is judged, but not in terms of stuttering and fumbling and all those things. Debate speech cannot be read from a page. It's preferable if it's not scripted because your senior category, you don't have to script your speech. Uh, you can get 30, 40 seconds to prepare your reply speech, but it ha it'll have to be on the spot mostly. Okay, I think with that, we're done. So you all can leave the call and I'll leave too. We'll see, like we'll meet again tomorrow. If you have a sudden network issue, in that case, you'll be given two, three minutes. And if you're not able to join back, then that's a problem. So please be on a stable network connection. The duration of speech I've already explained is three minutes per speech. Ah, uh, no, no, no. The session will be from 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. That is for the middle category. It's not 6 p.m. to 7.30. Yeah, you can have the bullet points right in front of you. All right, I'll see you all. Bye. Thank you. Good night.